a couple of items sent by George alias Junk From Work. I think he's got a YouTube channel where he takes apart junk from work, I'm guessing. And uh, this is one of the items he sent, uh, which he describes as a steering assist module for a Ford pickup. I'm not, I'm not super au fait with uh, components, but I get the feeling this might actually be part of the steering wheel assembly. It might even be the clock spring mechanism. And there's a little uh, clue here that there's a catch that when you push this down, it lifts a pin and then you can rotate this. But that little indent there, when it winds back round, it clicks back in. That makes me wonder if this is actually the steering wheel assembly. Uh, and then there's a lock, the actual the ignition lock goes on the side. George also sent some uh, maple syrup, which I have not opened yet. Due to a terrible instant mid-transit, something, uh, the package got absolutely drenched with water and the postal service put it in a plastic bag, Mark said, sorry it got damaged, but then sealed it so it was marinated in liquid for the full journey. So I, I'm not sure what state this is going to be on the inside. But what we have here, I'm going to make wild guesses here. So we've got a connector coming out. We've got a fairly high current connector. I'm not sure what that would be for. Just two high current conductors, unless it's a heated steering wheel. Uh, then we've got three pins here. Could be canvas. Not sure. Or some other function. And I'm guessing the bright yellow tends to give clues along the lines of airbag. And it's that type of connector. I know this because I've watched South Main Auto and I've learned a lot from Eric. Oh, just the things he takes to bits. So it's my turn to take something to bits now. So this thing has these connectors that rotate. If I take that latch off, being careful not to rotate it too much, it can rotate multiple times and then lock. And it's got matching connectors here. There's three pins plus two big pins, which I'm guessing are going to these big wires. And then there's another yeah, connector here with about 12 pins in it. So I'm going to start taking this to bits. So if this is a clock spring, as I think it may be, and it might not be, uh, let's take these screws out the front. That, that's an idea. If it's a clock spring, it's a system used for transferring wires uh, to the control systems in the steering wheel. And uh, I used to think it was slip rings or something, but apparently it's just the reason it's called a clock, clock spring is it's a, it's a flat ribbon of cables that are wrapped round and round. And it's just like a clock spring, so it'll allow a certain number of revolution in one direction and the other direction. But part of the reason you have to be careful with clock springs is uh, in cars is to make sure you don't rotate it when the steering wheel is off. Because if you do that and it goes on the wrong position, it's going to potentially tighten up before the when the cables are going to be fully wound up. And if they pull the steering wheel further, it could damage the cables. So I'm guessing that's the reason for that. I'm guessing they probably have one or two turns allowance, or maybe not. This comes off to reveal. Oh, I see. I see the riveting cables in there. I see them. I'm thinking that's what this is. The electricity transfer mechanism. I shall pop this out the way because I think everything else is clipped together. Shall we zoom down a bit? Yes, we shall. Oh, yeah. See the cables in there? They're sort of ribbon cables. And as I rotate this, they are sort of extending out and contracting. Oh, that's interesting. It's, a, it's different to what I was expecting. It almost seems more complicated. I'm just going to wind this. And wind. Oh, no, they've gone tight. Okay. Okay, let's open this up and get them out and see what they look like. This is where someone's looking at this and they absolutely desperately need one of these for their Ford pickup. And they're saying, you bastard for taking it to bits. Sorry if you're in that situation. I'm guessing, I was going to say, I'm guessing being Ford, it's not going to be that expensive. But then again, all vehicle spares are expensive. Unless you buy them on eBay. There is a little plastic pin here. Again, this is uh, Eric O. Exploring things in his channel as he takes them apart. Oh, this might actually be a separate module. It's very interesting. Oh, there's electronics. There are... Electronics. Is this an encoder? Is there something here that's rotating that? And this might have... Ma oh, it's actually... I think I can see it. it. This is an encoder for actually detecting the rotation of the wheel. Oh, it's more sophisticated than I thought. It's got the whole lot in it. Okay. Let's go further. 
This is definitely an expensive module then. That might be the steering wheel angle detect that's used to actually uh, send signals to the control system with reference to uh, how the sort of the suspension and all that. It's very, really complicated. Cars used to be so simple. They're not simple anymore. They're all very sophisticated. Okay, they've got a little clip under there. Righty ho, let's get these off. Something's going to ping shortly. I'm pretty sure it's going to ping. I wouldn't be so I wouldn't be so gung ho taking this apart if it was a crucial component of my vehicle. I would be doing what Erico does and proceed with extreme caution, noting what went where all the time. Oh, this isn't really coming apart easily. Is there something I'm missing here? Is there another clip I'm missing? This is probably a bit that you're not really supposed to open anyway, so that's why it's not coming apart too easily. It feels like there's something holding it shut. Are these connectors? These could be connectors, the little tangs at the side. I don't think they'd be holding it in though. They might be holding it in. Let's uh, try that. So I'm guessing, is this the airbag connector? This is where I could have done with that little pick that Erico has been using recently. I don't know if this does come out here. I think that is fixed in. Uh, actually, I see some screws. I see some small screws here that may actually be a factor in this and would give better access to this this assembly in here. I think that's what's holding this on. Right, tell you what, screwdrivers. Uh, they are little mini Torx. I can use the same set, I think. I guess it's going to be the smallest one if it isn't. I'm screwed. Oh. <laughs> I'm screwed. Uh, that's not so good. Righty ho. Right, I'm going to have to get the precision drivers. Ooh, the precision ones. Right. One moment, please. And resume. I have the correct size of screwdriver. We're talking precision drivers here. For those super delicate mechanics. I have just checked, by the way, I've counted the number of revolutions. It's about six revolutions you get off this clock spring. So I suppose ultimately, if you very carefully wound it to each end without being too forceful, you could get the total number of revolutions, then wind it back half that number to get a mid position. I don't know if that would be a recommended procedure or not. Oh, yeah, here is the, here is this assembly here, but is it going to come out? Oh, it's covered in grease. Ah. Oh, it is absolutely slabbered in grease. And it is just... Is each... All right, I get it. I get it. These ones are just a single conductor. But this one is multiple conductors. That is kind of... Well, I'd recommend not taking these apart. Uh, they're full of grease. And they are extremely complicated to put back in. But that is what's inside them. Have I stayed in shock while doing that? I think so. I'll just zoom out a little bit, just because I'm always a bit cautious that I'm, I'm uh, going too far. But yeah, that contains a pund of mints. A complete pun of mints. Let's take a look then, since i got this screwdriver here. There's this little module. Is this going to be a lift-up catch, or is this going to be a slide-out catch? I think it's going to be a lift-up catch. It is a lift-up catch. We'll pull that little ribbon cable out. And that, uh, well, this is actually heat staked down, so that's not going to lift up. Let's take the rest of it off. That might be a sensor board. There's a lot of circuitry in this. But then I'm guessing this will have CAN bus connections. Uh, so it will just be a little processor or something and some power supply circuitry. And then sending data back. I just see power supply stuff under here. And the processor. There's the processor. And is there a CAN bus driver chip? Could be. Or is that... Hold on. Uh, I'm just going to explore this. Excuse me, getting distracted here. What is that chip there? Uh, 5090-EJA. 25G G1542. I'm not sure what that is. It's got a load of pins coming together. I would say it's going to be... Oh no, I thought it was going to be a MOSFET, but I'm not really sure... It could be some sort of serial communication chip. I'm not sure. Uh, what about this little circuit board here? This is where someone's going to be screaming because I'm taking this off completely. So this bit here is rotating. 
Oh, that that spitting's not rotating anymore. And there obviously is some sort of cog going in there and moving these. Oh, there's two of them. Could that be backup? Could that be one of these things they do in cars where they put in double backup? Oh, that comes off. That comes off. But it is moulded in. I'm going to have to break those little rivets. Oh, rivets are breaking. Rivets are breaking. Be careful not to damage that little ribbon cable, although to be honest, this ain't going back anywhere. And that comes off and it reveals there's magnets in there and there's two Hall Effect sensor chips underneath. So uh, what we've got down here is if I zoom up just a little bit, as this uh, ring rotates here, it rotates these magnets in here. I wonder if their position is super critical, rel relevant to each other. And they are rotating pretty much above these little chips. Are they to the side of these chips? Hold on, I'm just going to position that back on again and see. They're dead centre to those. So those little uh, chips are pretty much dead centre to those magnets. So those magnets are just basically rotating in front of these little chips. That's odd. I've not seen sensors like that before. Hall effect sensors, yes, but not this particular style. Are they readable? No, they're not readable. There is a number on them, but it's very, very, it's been covered over. It's been covered with a formal coating. I'm guessing they're probably a fairly specialist component. More agrees. So as you rotate that, it is spinning these. It's detecting the rotation, but does it detect a, a physical end stop? Or is it just... I'm not sure. Is there a reference position that it detects on here as well? Is there a magnet in here so it would get an absolute definite position? I'm not seeing anything obvious in here. What about this? Nope, that's just a, a coupling bit. I don't see a magnet in it. So I don't know how it gets its uh, exact positional reference. It would just detect number of pulses as the steering wheel was rotated. Yeah, not seeing a magnet in there. I thought there would be one. I thought there might be another sensor up close to the on this circuit board. But I don't see that. Unless it's that. Could be, but I'm not really sure. What about this? Does this have any more? No, that is all that's on that is those two sensors detecting the rotation. That's strange. I don't know how it gets its default position. I don't see anything obvious in here for that. Uh, if you're a mechanic and you know, then let me know. I'm suspicious about that component because the way the tracks are all leading out and its position there. Hold on. Let's get a, let's uh, prove this definitively if there's a magnet in, concealed in this. By getting a mother of all magnets and put it in the vicinity Nope, nothing. Nothing in there. Nothing in here. What else would be rotating that screws that it's just picked up off the bench? What else would be rotating here? Nothing that I'm really detecting here. Oh, have I missed something that, you know, what is it using to get an absolute wheel mid position? Because it can't, unless it is always active and it counts the number of pulses, so that when you, you've got the wheel to a reference position, it, it's always monitoring that and counting the pulses in both directions. Surely not. That would be quite complicated. That would be so easy to lose its reference. But there we go. That is what's inside these uh, clock spring things. This is the clock spring. It's actually a series of flat ribbon cables wound on top of each other with uh, varying sizes of conductors depending on how many, uh, what sort of current is going along each circuit. And uh, then the positional sensors underneath. So that, that's pretty interesting. So thanks to George, alias Junk at Work, for sending that. That was really interesting to take apart.